All right, young scholars. This week, we are again going to cover CSS for the 226 remote lecture. Again, you're welcome to download the PowerPoint to look through as such. And with any questions after I post the class lecture recording in this folder, you're always welcome to join the Zoom meeting. We'll touch on the CSS assignment at the end of the video, but for this week's participation points, you're going to slightly modify the Polaroids example on slide number seven to feature images of your choosing. There's only two, so it should be fairly easy. So here on slide two, I provide you with code on how you would go about rotating specific text within a solid black border box using CSS. And if you copy that code in your WYSIWYG and run it, you'll notice that there's one text. This is a normal div element. And then an element is rotated clockwise 20 degrees. This is what our transform rotate allows us to do using CSS. Our CSS allows us to set border, background, height, width, etc. That transform and rotate are inherited classes that can be used within CSS. Again, this is a little outdated and may not be used often on websites, but you're more than welcome to use it if you so choose. On slide number three, we have similar code for transitioning. So when you put that in your WYSIWYG, you'll notice that the width 2s, height 4s. If you hover, the width and height expand to 300 pixels. So when I click or hover over it, it expands to that size. And if I move away, it goes back to its original size of 100 pixels by 100 pixels. And you could change the hover or the initial settings to modify this based on your needs. You could change the background color of the box from red to blue to purple, whatever specifically you would prefer to utilize. Next, on slide number four, I provided you with the HTML code to modify using animation within CSS. So here we've set up our keyframes. First, we have red, yellow, blue, green, and red. The division or divider element has a background color set up of red and the animation duration is only set to be four seconds. So if you paste that in your WYSIWYG, and run, the animation goes through the red box, the yellow box, the blue box, the red box, or the green box, and then the red box. Let's watch again. Run, goes to yellow, blue, green, goes back to red. So it simply goes right, down, left, up again. And changes into these three colors all within four seconds. <clears throat> Again, another fairly outdated option to use on websites, but you're more than welcome to use it if you so choose. Then on slide five, you have in this first part code for a rounded image, and in the second part, you have code for a circle image. A rounded image is just going to curve off the four corners of the image, whereas a circled image is going to try and put the image within a circle.
Next on slide six here, we have code for how you would go about setting up a thumbnail image as a link. And here we have our width, padding, border radius, border color, etc. When you add all that code in, you'll notice here that because the paris.jpg is no longer up on this server, <clears throat> that it doesn't necessarily help us out here. But what this would be doing if we had a image that was still up on the server, it would show the small image here within that 100 pixel width. And you would be able to click the picture to open a bigger picture. So the image source, the hyperlink reference. So this is, if you recall way back in the fall, you would set it up as a thumbnail. A smaller version of the picture allows them to click the picture and open it in a bigger setting. On slide seven here, you're going to copy this code for the Polaroids into your WYSIWYG. And you'll get something that looks like this. Instead of the little black piece of paper there, like a Polaroid from many, many years ago, instead it's white with the text in it and it gives you the picture here. So you notice that there's two images, but only the first one still has the file up on this server. So what you're going to do for your two points of participation is simply change the image source here equals img underscore five terror dot jpeg and the lights here you are going to put your own URL in for an image to get to Polaroids like this. And you're more than welcome to change the header as you so choose. Let's say, uh, you know, Dylan's Polaroids, for example, could be your new header if that's what you choose to do. <laughs> On slide eight, you're provided with the CSS code that would give you a transparent image. This is why people tend to use .png files or pictures on their websites because they are usually often transparent, whereas JPEGs, GIFs, et cetera, are not. On slide nine here, you're provided with the HTML code with CSS in it of image text. <clears throat> and this is also showing you transparency within image text. So you see here, sync ter comes up as an image centered with a little bit of a opaque background. See how the text is a little faded? That's because we have set our opacity to 0 0.3. Again, somewhat outdated and not commonly used, but something you're more than welcome to use as you so choose. You'll see here that it's dot center with centers. On slide number 10, you'll see that you can also do it from the top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right, as you so choose. On slide 11 here, within the notes section, if you click notes in the PowerPoint slide, all of the code is right there to copy. If you do that, you notice something that's very fun and commonly used on websites these days, especially if you have, let's say, a staff of multiple people, you might have their picture and then some kind of information for them. So this is how it would look. 
you have your initial picture here, your avatar, and then the overlay is set. I scroll over, it says, hello world. What would usually happen on specific websites, like I said, especially if they have different staff they want to talk about, is the image would be a picture of them. And then instead of hello world, it might be a little description about who they are. And in this instance, the slide comes in from the bottom. On slide 12 here, you're provided with code on how you would create rounded buttons, as well as on slide 13. They're set to be green rounded buttons. However, again, this is a little outdated practice that is very uncommon. So you would basically create a green rounded button based on this code with any specific information inside, maybe a link. But again, as mentioned, it's quite outdated. So it is not common. Then on slides 14 through 20, if you combine all of this code together, you end up with hoverable buttons. <clears throat> so you will see in your CSS code, when you put it all together, that we are setting the first button, dot button, to be green. Then we are adding different CSS code to each of our buttons as we go through. Override. So button one has a color, a hover color. Button two has a color and a hover color. Button three has a cover color, but then also another hover color, et cetera, et cetera. And then you call on these classes to put information. In. So our first button is green. When we hover over it, it's green. Our second button is blue. When we hover over it, it's blue. Our third button is red. When we hover over it, it's red. Our fourth button is gray. When we hover over it, it's gray. You'll notice how the outline of the gray around it is a little faded compared to the darker colors. And then our last button is set as black. When we hover over it, it can be black. Now, this is something that is still commonly used on websites, especially the hovering over to have it turn into another color. Now, it may not be done this way where it's five different colors. Usually it's done with all of them would be green, all of them would be blue, all of them would be red, et cetera. With that said, it's now time to touch on the CSSs. So you're asked to create an HTML file called dropdown.html where you utilize internal CSS to create a drop-down menu and set CSS parameters, color, alignment, et cetera, for your headers and paragraphs. Your drop-down menu should include a home, about me, class info, and contact me pages list. Create drop-downs for both the about me and class info sections. So maybe, you know, your about me, you add maybe a, a LinkedIn link, um, your email, something like that. You're going to refer back to the example code provided in 212. The favorite sports teams here. to remind yourself how to do the specific drop-downs.
And for some reason, it's not working on here. You all remember we had the different colors. This was white, the others were green, etc. You would modify and add in your style code to make the changes to your paragraph and headers to apply <clears throat> color alignment, whatever you may choose to use for headers and paragraphs. But instead of home and favorite sports teams, it's going to be home, about me, class info, and contact me pages. Again, you would submit that for your CSS assignment onto Black. Thank <laughs> you. 